I really got to offer my opinion about this movie. I'm sure you know how I feel. It was awesome. 9 out of 10. The best in the franchise. X1 and X2 directed by Brian Singer. Great movies. X3 and Wolverine. Not so good. In fact, quite forgettable. What makes X-Men First Class work is not only that we have an awesome director, Matthew Vaughn directed Kick-Ass, but it was the story and development of Professor X and Magneto as friends. They had a very dynamic relationship and I love that we got to see how they went from strangers to friends to nemesis. In fact, when you watch these movies, you look at X1 and X2 in a totally different way. The reason why is because you get to see that they have history. They were actually people that cared for one another and that they aren't just out there to rip each other's hearts out. It was never like that at all. This movie really helps explain how things come together. It's kind of like Iron Man, Spider-Man, and Batman Begins. It's an origin story. For example, how did Peter Parker get the powers? Where did Bruce Wayne get the Batcave? And where did the Batmobile come from? Where did he get all those tools? Iron Man, how did he develop the f ability of flight? You see all these little things come together and everything's explained. You get to find out where did the uh, X-Jet come from? They talk about Cerebro. You know, there's a number of things. I'm not going to mention any of it because it's all, you'll see it when you watch the movie if you haven't already. But I just love that you see everything come together like a puzzle. And the main thing that makes it work is the performances by Michael Fassbender and James McAvoy. They did a perfect job and they were perfectly casted. That was the best thing about the movie. The relationship between Eric Lenscher, 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 Lenscher I think it's Lenscher, and Charles Xavier. And we got to see Charles Xavier as not only this really calm, bald-headed guy bound by a wheelchair, but it was a guy with a full set of hair and he was actually a very charming and fun individual and that's what was great about him because we got to see another side of him and as for Eric Lenscher as Magneto he's a very conflicted uh, emotional character that has a really big struggle deep down inside of him and that is what makes these characters so interesting to watch so that's what's so great about this movie. Other things that were great is the pacing. One thing that's very important to me about movies is that I know when a movie is good when I'm just engaged in it. The pacing is perfect. There's not a single scene which is a long drawn out scene of exposition because when I was watching the movie every scene was interesting. The movie just flowed by and I think the movie is two hours and 14 minutes or something like that and it just flowed by just so smoothly and I didn't once want to look at my watch or anything like that not that I would have a watch or anything but I, I just didn't feel like that it dragged on which was great because in actuality I think there was only three main big action sequences and a bunch of smaller ones but two of them were the biggest ones and I like that you know even though there was a lot of drama in the first half of the movie it really builds it up for this really awesome finale at the end. In my opinion, the movie is near perfect. There are some things that I thought could have been improved. For example, I thought some characters were kind of weak just because they didn't do a whole lot. I felt that Emma Frost's character was pretty flat. It was a pretty flat character. Azazel, awesome character, but I wish he had lines. I felt uh, that the, the girl with, with the wings, Angel, yeah, I think her name is Angel. I think that she was a pretty weak character, but that wasn't because of her performance. It was just because like she doesn't do a whole lot in the movie. And that's, I think, is the only complaint I had about the movie. I think one of the best scenes was the scene where Charles Xavier was teaching the younger mutants how to use their abilities. I think that was actually one of the best scenes in the movie. And that is what's great about movies like this. It doesn't need a big action sequence for it to be great. It's the scenes of development because you really understand the relationships. Matthew Vaughn really nailed it making this the best movie in the franchise. 9 out of 10, the best movie I've seen all year so far. So let me know what you think. Where was Stanley's cameo? I was looking all over for it. If you can answer that in the comment section below, that would be awesome. So let me know what you think in the comment section below and also you can let me know where Stanley's cameo was, if he was in it at all. This is Alex Yoon, thanks for watching the Raging Ronin Review. Peace. Like people were calling the Einstein bot Einstein, but he's actually Wheeljack, who's actually Q, and Brains, who's not Q, is actually Wheeljack, who is actually Q2. <laughs>